Hello and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I have been making bread pudding or should I say British bread pudding. I'm fully aware that if there's any people um, from the USA out there watching this um, they're thinking that's not bread pudding but it is it's British bread pudding. What you call bread pudding I'm fully aware is bread and what we call bread and butter pudding. Um, it's a custard with dried fruit in. I will be making that sometime after Christmas, but today I've been made making this delicious bread pudding. Try it, it is wonderful. Let me just taste a bit for you. It's made with mixed spice and it's got orange rind in there and nutmeg on the top. Oh, it smells as delicious as it tastes. Mm. Mm. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to show you today before I show you how to make this bread pudding is my new purchase. <laughs> I got this bowl from TK Maxx especially to make the bread pudding. So for years, look at my precious bowl. <laughs> For years I've been making the bread pudding in a smaller bowl, the bowl that I normally, the brown one, if you've seen my videos before, a little brown one, and it all slops over the side. Um, and so it doesn't slop over the side on camera. I have purchased what I've been wanting for years, a great big bowl from TK Maxx. Really reasonable. It was $12.99 and I think the, um, the retail price that they put on it is £25. So yeah, wonderful. I was really pleased with that purchase. So yes, that's my bowl. And this is my bread pudding and enjoy. I hope you like it. So we start by cutting the crusts off the bread. Here I have 16 ounces of bread. Um, you can use white or brown. It's entirely up to you. Um, I've used both. I've used eight ounces of each today. So as you can see, I've cut all the crusts off. You do not want crusts because um, the idea is the bread goes soggy in the milk. So the crusts will stay hard. So we just need to cube these and put them in the bowl. They don't have to be tiny cubes. Just very rough. pop those in a bowl, you'll need a big bowl. <laughs> you can make half this mixture. Um, I just make this huge amount because bread pudding freezes really well. So I make a huge batch and I will freeze some. And you can freeze it in little portions too. So going back to cutting this bread, what I'm gonna do, I've cut a couple of slices of white and now I'm gonna go in and cut a couple of slices of brown so my white and brown get all muddled up in the bowl so muddled up in the pudding and um, distributed I should say rather than muddled up <laughs> Yes, as I was saying, you can do half this amount, so you could make it with just eight ounces of bread. The bread can be stale bread, that's where the um, recipe originated from. You know, they, in the old days they used to use up all their stale bread on puddings like this. So that's all my bread cut up in my bowl and I'm just going to pour over one pint or 600 millilitres of milk. Drizzle it over so it, it covers as much bread as you can get it to cover. And that just needs to be left for half an hour for the milk to soak in. So while the bread is soaking in the milk, I'm going to put into my pan four ounces or 100 grams of butter and I'm just going to melt that. When you get down to just having these few little pieces of butter left, you can turn the heat off and that can just melt in the heat that's already in the pan. 
So next we need to put our oven on and uh, butter the dish that the pudding is going to go into. So I've just put my oven on 160 degrees centigrade. Um, if you're Fahrenheit, it's just over 300. And we need to butter this dish well. And just set that aside until the pudding's um, fully soaked for its half an hour. Mine's still got Mine's still got about five minutes, so I'll just wait till it's had its 20 minutes. So here's my bread that's been soaked for its 20 minutes. We just need to give it a stir to make sure all the egg has been incorporated into the bread. It's all soaked in. There. That's perfect. Next we need to add the melted butter that has slightly cooled from earlier. and six ounces or 175 grams of soft light brown sugar. And in, in my bowl, I have two eggs, which I will whisk. And they go in two. So next I'm going to put in four level teaspoons of mixed spice. Two, three, I'm going to give that a mix up with the spoon first. Oh, it smells so nice, the mixed ice. Mm. Give that a good old mix. Once that's been mixed with the uh, spoon, I'm going to go in with a fork. This is going to take some time, but we need to get all the bits of bread kind of, the only word I can use to describe it is in a mush. <laughs> we don't want visible pieces of bread. You could do with a big old fork for this, or you could use a whisk. I might get a whisk out and see if that works a little better. There, we'll try a whisk. Yeah, this is doing it. We just need to keep going. Cool, who needs to go to the gym? <laughs> I'm gonna go through with my fork, just to make sure there are no bits of bread. Oh, that's made me quite out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's done. Um, so that's the consistency, if you can see that. Um, and then we're going to put the fruit in. The next thing we need to do is put in the rind of one orange. So I've washed this orange already and I'm just going to grate the rind off. Now the rind is just the orange bit, that's the bit with the flavour, that's where all the orange oils are. We don't want the white from underneath because that's very bitter. Of course, it's a big old orange. <laughs> that's nice though, it give a lot of flavour. Probably don't need one as big as this, but this is what was delivered in my supermarket order yesterday. So make sure you get, I've still got, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I've still got some little bits of orange rind, so I'm gonna get all those off. It's such a beautiful flavour and it smells so nice when you're doing it too. <laughs> oh, just one tiny bit there, get that off. Now that's it. Set that aside and bring the bowl back. And all this just needs to go in here. Let's scrape it all out from inside. Make sure you get it all, that lovely flavour. And there's a little bit here too. <laughs> too much and of course what we've got on the plate can go in. Oh I'm getting the aroma now of all the um, the mixed spice and the orange and oh it's lovely. And then goes in the fruit. So I've got 12 ounces of mixed fruit here. I have today I've used raisin sultanas and currants. I've used four ounces of each, but you can get a mixed fruit bag. It's entirely up to you what mixed 
what dried fruit you use. So it all goes in and we give it a mix. Oh, it smells gorgeous. <laughs> it smells so gorgeous. There, that's just about perfect. And we need to now put it in the pan to put in the oven. So now all there's left to do is to pop it all in the pan, um, which is easier said than done because this is heavy. <laughs> this is very heavy. Spoon down there and just tip the majority of it out first, I think. There. That's the majority of it and now it's a little lighter. Get my spatula out and finish off. There, so that's what it looks like. Just give it a, a bit of a wobble just to um, even it all out. And then we just need to sprinkle some nutmeg on the top before it goes into the oven. Just a little bit, not too much. Make sure it goes on evenly there. So that goes in for somewhere between an hour and a quarter and an hour and a half. I did turn my oven down to 150 20 minutes ago uh, because it looked as though it was nearly the pudding was nearly done. Uh, it's now been in for an hour and 15 minutes. Let's get it out to see if it's done. So my pudding's out of the oven. Oh, I wish you could smell it. The smell of spice and the orange smell. It smells like Christmas, even though we're only mid-November. So it needs to be left to cool for about 20 minutes. This bread pudding is best served warm with a sprinkling of caster sugar. If you've enjoyed this recipe, please consider subscribing. It is free and it will help my channel greatly. If you do make the bread pudding, please let me know in the comments how you get on. I hope you like it.